Hi people, welcome to my channel. I am Arpita Karwa and this is a video dedicated for all the aspirants who want to understand how to revise in the last few days. I am pretty sure that UGC net exam is coming nearer and your heartbeats are also raising in the same speed. So if that is the case with you, don't worry. This video is specifically for all those who are struggling with the question what if I forget on the day of the exam? How should I remember? How should I revise all this that I've studied in so many months and give my best shot on the day of the exam? So if that is you, then keep watching this video because in this video, I'm going to tell you some scientific tips on how to improve your memory and prepare for a competitive exam by revising in a certain way. So let's begin without any further delay. But before that, there are a lot of other videos which I have made specifically for UGC net aspirants. There are uh, videos on how to solve MCQs, on how to uh, make mind maps and remember faster, what are the things that you must remember when you're giving your exam, some do's and don'ts. So don't forget checking out all these videos before you sit for the exam because in these videos, I've given you some mistakes which commonly students make and lose out on important marks. So all the video links are there in the i button. Also, you can find these videos on my YouTube channel. So subscribe my channel and get to see all these videos in the playlist. The first important principle of revision is the very simple fact that information plus emotion leads to long term memory. I'll explain what this actually means. We all must understand the fact that whatever we are learning, that is actually attaching itself with certain emotion. Let me tell you, while I was attending a neuro linguistic programming seminar last week, I figured out a very, very important thing, which said that human beings are emotional beings we are not logical beings we are emotional beings you must question that no i am not an emotional person i am a logical person let me tell you friend that if you think this you're mistaken why i can sing a song for you and that might actually take you to a childhood memory there's a fragrance uh, which you smells somewhere and you are transported to that particular moment when you actually felt it for the first time. Or a very simple example would be Ma Ke Haat Ka Khana. When you eat something after 20 years also, you can totally relate that this is just like the way my mother used to cook food. So you can see how any information which has a very strong emotion attached to it is going to be stored in your long term memory. 20, 25 years pehle kuch hua hai, wo aapko turant yaad jata hai when you actually see something which can actually tell you bridge that gap between information emotion so what i'm trying to say here is that all learning is state dependent the way we learn and the emotion that we are feeling while we are learning that is anchored to the very process of learning you all must be aware of the situation that there were classes during our schools when we used to hate the subject so for example for me it was maths i used to hate maths why I used to hate math? Because what was the class situation when the math teacher was teaching? If you look at the student's reaction, you will figure out that most of the students were either bored or confused. So in the scale of 0 to 10, how exciting the class was. For me, it was in negative. For you, it might be 3 or 4. On the other hand, I remember all the English lessons. Why? Because in the scale of 0 to 10, the excitement level, the emotions that were attached with that subject was somewhere 8 or 9. The way teacher used to teach, I used to really enjoy it. And that is the reason why I have taken up a career which is in the same field. Because my emotional connect with English literature is very strong. So what I meant by explaining you all this is the fact that if you want to actually retain anything for your exam, make sure that there is some emotion attached to it. 
don't just try to mug up information that is not going to stay in your memory for long if you want to actually understand something add some emotion into it if you're reading a writer like shakespeare just try to feel that love when you're reading romeo and juliet that emotional connect is going to be so strong that you'll remember all the characters of romeo and juliet and you read hamlet with no interest with no emotion you'll forget even the major character's name why is that happening because information only linked with emotion can stay in your long term memory so i keep on saying that again and again because i want you to understand the basic pattern of mind mind works best when there is information with emotion so whenever you are studying or learning anything new try to put some good emotion into it so that that can bridge the gap and you can stay with that information forever the next important thing that you must understand is that why children learn so good and so fast and so efficiently have you ever noticed this i have a brother who is like 8 years younger to me and i've actually seen him growing up like a kid so when i used to see him learning languages and subjects i was amazed to see the capacity with which he used to learn so quick and he was so attentive so playful throughout the day and if you look at these characteristics you will figure out that why children learn at a much faster rate than we adults do i was attending a lot of seminars these days psychologist uh, i was meeting and while i was discussing all these things with them i figured out that there are two things which children have and which we lack the first one is neurogenesis now what is neurogenesis neurogenesis are new brain cells children are so attentive so happy so playful that new brain cells are developing constantly and when new brain cells are developing their brain is becoming more powerful and they can retain a lot of information a lot of things so quickly on the other hand the next important thing that children have are neuroplasticity now what is neuroplasticity i i can understand that a lot of biology is coming into play but i actually want you to understand it thoroughly so that you start applying it in your life neuroplasticity are new connections so we all know that there are different neurons and protons and there are different nervous system connections that are there in our brain einstein uh, is said to have more neuroplasticity that means more neuro connections than we have the brain size was same yet he was able to use it somewhere around 3 to 4% we can hardly use it even uh, 1% the reason why he was able to use so much of his brain is because there were new new connections with the same information so when you are attentive when you are happy when you are motivated when you actually know why you are studying it and how this is going to help you in your future life you feel motivated to study and new brain cells are built new connections are built and that is how with very less effort you can actually retain a information for a longer run so make sure that when today you are sitting down for studying you make it a playful activity do something about it so that it appears to be more fun and less boredom and i'm pretty sure that what you study in that one hour would be way more better than how you have studied in the past one week another important thing that you must have rewired in your brain after this video is the fact that all learning is belief driven I can't tell you how important this step would be in order for you to understand that you can remember everything. I have seen a lot of students calling me and complaining me that ma'am I have a very bad memory. I forget things. Whatever I learn, I always forget it on the day of the exam and so much negative self talk they have. I would like to tell you here is that there's a very beautiful quote by Henry Ford and I'm pretty sure you must have heard it somewhere or the other. The quote says that if you believe you can or if you believe you cannot either way you are right agar aap sochte hain aap kar sakte hain aur agar aap sochte hain aap nahi kar sakte dono hi tarike se aap sahi hain because whatever you are going to feed inside your brain that will become your truth
I am going to tell you a very very blunt truth here. There is nothing called good or bad memory. Please इस चीज को अपने दिमाग से हटा दीजिए There is only a trained and untrained memory. किसी के भी दिमाग में ऐसा नहीं है कि उसका bad memory है वो भूल जाता है वो भूलता इसलिए है क्योंकि वो सोचता रहता है कि मैं भूल जाऊंगा So if you keep on telling yourself I'll forget, I'll forget, I'll forget, your brain will lose its capacity and it will say that yes, since you're saying you will forget, you will. And if I tell myself from today itself, I'm going to remember. I remember things well. Whatever I study in the first go, I remember it. And if you keep on saying that, your brain will work accordingly. It's a very simple thing. Your brain is like that super computer and the self-talk is the program that runs it. So if you have a negative self-talk, the super computer will not be efficient. So remember that every day when you sit for studies and when you get up from your study routine, meditate. And there's a very powerful meditation that I have uploaded on YouTube. I'm pretty sure that a lot of students are following it also. It's a five minute meditation. You just need to plug in your earphones and it's a meditation in which you have to visualize that on the day of the exam, you're writing all the answers correctly. You can actually see that all the answers that you have written are correct. All the questions that you can see in the question paper are appearing very easy to you. And when you reprogram your mind, gradually in four or five days, you will see that whatever you're revising is going to stay in your brain. So make sure that you understand the importance of your belief. All learning is belief driven. If you think you can remember, you will. If you think you can't remember, you will not remember. It's just in your head. In this video, I've given you a lot of theoretical concepts and I can understand that you are looking forward for something more practical which you can apply and get results. So I have uh, taken out six key principles for faster learnings from a lot of books and by speaking to a lot of psychologists and I have summarized it in the form of a mnemonic which is be fast. So put these six principles in a sheet of paper and apply it from today itself and I'm telling you that the day you start applying it you can see so much more energy and retention capacity in your brain. So B starts for belief. Now belief as I've already told you all learning is belief driven. Make sure that you have your beliefs aligned. Never tell yourself that you have a bad memory. Keep on appreciating yourself for remembering so many things and I'm pretty sure that more you appreciate yourself, more new things you'll be able to retain and remember. E stands for exercise. At least 30 minutes a day, take out time for exercise. So as your body moves, your brain grooves. So make sure that you keep on exercising every day so that you feel so efficient, so energetic and your brain muscles also become stronger when you exercise. F stands for a very important thing which I think nobody uses, that's forget. We all start reading something with some preconceived notions in our head and we keep on telling ourselves, nahi, ye to galat likha hai, ye to sahi likha hai, ye to sahi hai, ye galat hai. So have you ever seen yourself reading a blog about something you already know? So always make sure that when you're reading something new, you forget all the previous information. There's a doctor I visit and uh, in front of his cabin, there's a very beautiful line written that internet ke aadhi adhuri knowledge ko bahar hi chhod ke andar aaye. And I strongly believe in the idea that whenever we are reading anything new, let's take it in that same energy. Let's not try to look ki sahi hai, galat hai, acha hai, bura hai. Just look at it as if it is a new piece altogether. So forget all the previous information when you're reading anything new and just try to be present. A stands for active. So be active, be participative when you are reading anything. I have seen a lot of students, you know, just lying down on the bed with a book and trying to read it. Nothing is going in your head, man. You're just trying to fool yourself. So whenever you're reading, make sure you make notes, you highlight points, you keep on writing something here and there, you keep on jotting down examples. When you are active, when you're participating, you're just like a kid, as I've told you in this video, that kids learn with so much energy because they are very efficient. They are always playing full out. S is very important that a state dependent as I've already told you information with emotion is going to lead to learning. So make sure that you always have a good positive emotion attached with your learning process so that you can learn faster and better. And T as we all know is a very very crucial factor. T stands for teach. 
so always study with the intention that you're going to teach it to somebody so when you study with that intention that you're going to teach it you study with a lot more power and you study with all that dimensions so you're not just studying that particular subject you're actually looking at what all things can be asked from that particular topic okay so teach is very important always have this thing in mind that whatever i'm learning today i'm going to teach it to somebody tomorrow okay and if you have that intention in your mind, just look at how your brain reads it even more carefully. So with that note, I'm going to give an end to this video. I hope that all these tips and tricks that I've given you will be beneficial in your study preparation. I am hoping that uh, all that you're doing right now is making you feel more motivated. You're all positive and confident for the net exam. My good wishes are always with you. And I really hope that you shine on the day of the net exam. Wishing you all the best. Thank you so much for watching this video. Like and share this video with all your friends. Also comment if you have any other questions or queries. You can also put your questions on other social media platforms so that if in case it is not answered on YouTube, we love to answer it on the other social media platforms. We also keep you notified about all the important UGC net updates on the social media platform. So that's it for this video lecture. We'll meet very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.